Dusty, can you offer any clarity on, on Yuli and, and kind of what the measures he took to try to get back and kind of what the diagnosis and kind of his status is? Well, you know, he took every, um, he tried everything, you know, um, came in yesterday, got treatment, came in this morning early, got treatment, uh, didn't respond well enough to, to uh, you know, to, to play. Uh, he tried to, tried to run. Um, and, um, you know, from a guy who had knee injuries, um, the hardest thing to do was to stop and then the, to round the bases or have lateral movement. And, uh, you know, he tried everything. Um, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't crying, but he had tears in his eyes. You could tell how badly that he wanted to place. We just, uh, we just couldn't do it and had to replace him. Uh, front to your right, Dusty Francisco. Hey, Skip. Um, you, you talked about Julie. Um, do you have any thoughts about possible the possible uh, seven uh, game opener? And uh, if you don't mind me asking, also, pase lo que pase el día de hoy, si gana ganar, este será el último baile de Dusty Baker. Um, sí, pero no se puede um, hablar uh, el, el, el siete juego uh, starter. Uh, no tampoco uh, después de juego, pero espero um, hoy es el, es el último día. Um, uh, nosotros ha uh, preocupado el siete juega después de esto. Y, pero Yuli está uh, muy duele en in, in el uh, piernas y y no se puede uh, jugar con nosotros. Go to the second row on your left, Dusty. Hi, Dusty. Uh, on a day like today, when you have a chance to clinch a series and more importantly, the World Series, uh, are the emotions any different than a normal playoff game? And is your routine any different than a normal playoff game? No, my routine's not any different. You know, the emotions are definitely there and, and definitely there on both sides. You know, I mean, we're trying to close it out and they're trying to remain alive. And so, um, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, motion's running high today, but you got to try to remain as um, as calm, you know, as you can. Uh, you know, you can waste emotion early because we got three or four hours before the game starts. You know what I mean? You only got so much emotion, so you got to kind of calm it and uh, the closer the game gets and closer than I mean me personally my son asks me all the time dad are you excited yet and I tell him not yet and then he knows what answer he's going to get because I try to save it until the national anthem who's ever singing national anthem then that's when it gets to his put his peak we'll go to Christy in the second row here Hey, uh, Dusty, I wondered what, what was your day like today before you came to the ballpark? What did you do? What music did you mm -hmm. listen to? Like, kind of just a sense of your day? Well, yeah. First, I went and got coffee in my normal spot in Rice Village. And then I went to uh, pick up these expensive shoes that the sole came off in. <laughs> I, was, I was getting them repaired. And then I went by the uh, cleaners. And then... Uh, you know, then I came here and I uh, listened to, uh, you know, Big Mama Thornton. He ain't nothing but a hound dog. Because that's what I was listening to. That's what my mom used to tell me sometimes. Go to the back right corner with Anthony. Hey, Dusty. Um, yeah. You've referenced your son a lot during this yeah. run. I'm just curious, as he's gotten older, what's it been like to kind of to have him to bounce things off of or discuss yeah. these games with? Yeah, I mean, it's been great. You know, it's been great having him here. And, uh, you know, I mean, he was here last time, you know, 20 years ago. Well, he was here last year, too, but, you know, 20 years ago, he was he was three years old and a bat boy. So, yeah, as you can tell, you know, I think highly of my son. And, you know, like, uh, he's probably the most positive person that I've, you know, that I've met. You know, you know how... He's no longer a kid, but you know how kids are. 
I mean, you, you go fishing, they're always thinking they're going to catch something. And he does. And uh, he reminds me that, hey, Dad, you know, you get it done. Third row right in the middle here. Hi, Dusty. Uh, how can Julie's news affect uh, with uh, Frambel pitching mm. uh, so defensively? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll see. You know, like we, we went with Mancini because we think that he has the most experience at first base. And, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, whoever on the infield is going to get probably more action than they would normally get and also get more throws across the diamond than you'd normally get because there are going to be so many ground balls probably hit to the left side of the field. And uh, so, uh, you know, now it's Mancini's time to shine, and I, I feel that, you know, this is another opportunity for him to, to uh, you know, to have a good series all in one game, hopefully. First row right up front. <clears throat> Dusty, I know there's a lot of pressure already to just win a World Series as mm -hmm. a manager, but being on the verge of winning a World Series as an African-American manager, what does that mean to you, and do you have any different type of emotions? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, you know, it's in the hands of the Lord to me anyway. You know, I mean, as much as you think you're in control, you're really not in control as much as you think you are. Uh, so um, all you can control is, you know, what you can control. And uh, I don't think about being an African-American manager because I look in the mirror every day, I know what I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so uh, uh, I, I, I do know that... Um, you know, there's certain pressure from um, a lot of people that are pulling for me, especially people of color. And uh, that part I do feel. I hear it every day. I see it when I'm walking down the street. When I see policemen or bellmen or anybody of color, but especially of African-American color. And so um, I feel that you know, I've been chosen for this. Now, there was a time that I didn't necessarily want it, but that's been the story of my life. A lot of things I didn't want that, you know, you're forced to be in this position and think about my dad and all the souls of, um, that are passed before me. Two more, two more. Uh, Danielle on your left, Dusty. Christian Vasquez obviously played a big role in, in catching that no-hitter the other night, but ha being having the opportunity to DH him today, you know, mm -hmm. you guys have only done that once, I think, since he came over here. Mm -hmm. Just what are you looking for uh, offensively from him, and what have you seen throughout this, this postseason well, so far? Well, number one, he's a contact guy. You know, I can do a lot of things with him. Um, <clears throat> you know, I did that one time as an experiment to see um, – I had wanted to do it a couple times, but I didn't want to have to necessarily, in case something happened to Maldi, if I had to hit for Maldi or run for Maldi or whatever it is, I really didn't want to put my team in a position where I was going to lose the DH and then have to put a pitcher in there and then hit for the pitcher, you know, revert back to my National League days, you know, with only a four-man bench. So um, this is something that I had thought about, talked about, especially with my batting coaches many times, but wasn't in a position to do so, you know, without the third catcher, even though the third catcher would probably be in a game late, uh, catching and not very experienced. But, you know, I put kids in, not kids, but I put young players in a position many times, and they've, they've come through. You know what I mean? So... Uh, just like I told him, hey, man, you know, David slew Goliath, so maybe I hope I don't have to use David necessarily <laughs> sometime. <laughs> but I, I, that's what I told him. And we'll finish up with Matt up front here. 
I was going to ask you, Josh, about the collaborative uh, thinking of you know, pitching, pitcher usage and that type of thing, but it all comes down to your decision. And do you enjoy that spot? It would seem well, like to outsiders to make the decision of which pitcher to go with now, next time, next time after that, mm -hmm. you know, in-game decisions. Oh, I, I, you I, obviously enjoy managing. Is yeah. That, yeah. Well, that's part of my job, but I mean, it's, it's also, uh, I'm the one that does it, but it, I'm not the only one that's in the decision. You know what I mean? So that's why, I mean, the president of the United States makes a decision and addresses the public, but uh, he got a secretary of defense, secretary of treasury, secretary of this, and secretary of that. And, uh, and, and a man that doesn't use his counsel is, is not a very wise man. That's why you, you know, especially if you're waging war or whatever it is which we are out there in, you have to use your, you have to use uh, the people that were trained to do that. So, um, and it's and it's a little tougher now because we're in the age of, of the sabermetrics and different things, and sometimes the computer doesn't necessarily agree with me or you or whatever. But I'm the one that has to deliver the the message. It's the, the challenge of real-time decision. I mean, you can mm -hmm. sit and plan all day long, but you have to make the real-time decision. Then you'll be asked about it later. Yeah, well, what I'm going to do, that's just like the coach that I was reading the other day, the coach that uh, started a young quarterback, and he goes to the – to the uh, get a haircut on Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday after the Saturday game and college game, and the, and the barber tells him, hey, man, I don't think I'd use that young quarterback on Saturday that you use. And the coach said, hey, if I had until, until Sunday to make that decision, I wouldn't have used him either. <laughs> Dusty, thanks so much. We'll see you later.